If somebody said this morning, let's read again where we stop for service. Let's read from 1 Samuel chapter 9, and then we are going to read verse 17. Or let's start from 18. Or let's just read 19. <laughs> I, we have to call out the new set of leaders this morning. So I have to be very fast so that we can still finish before 12. The Bible says, And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place, for you shall eat with me today. And tomorrow I will let you go, and I will tell thee all that is in thy heart. As for thy eyes, as asses, they were lost three days ago. Set not thy bind on them, for they are found. Hallelujah. So we stop for service by saying that what is in your heart might be different from what is on your mind. And we explain that in life, you need interpretation of what is in your heart. So we started by reading about Judges. We read about Gideon. Now we read about Saul. Saul was looking for his father's asses. That was what bombarded his mind that time. And so to call the long story short, he met Samuel. And Samuel told him that, look, the asses have been found. You are going to eat with me today. When I'm about to let you go tomorrow, I will tell you what is in thy heart. The matters of your heart are more important than the asses you are looking for. Are you with me? Eventually, what was in his heart? It was to rule Israel. Now, have your seats. God bless you. Because of this scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse, 13, verse 11. Let's read Ecclesiastes 3, 11. And then we're going to discover something from that scripture. Ecclesiastes 3, 11 says, He had made everything beautiful. Please pay attention. In his time. So, when the time comes for a thing, it appears beautiful. It appears wonderful. And the Bible says, also as he set the word in their hearts, so that no man can find the work of God, the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Now, this word, he has set the word in their hearts. The translation some of you that you have is better. The Bible says, eternity is written in their hearts. How many have such a translation here? If that's what your Bible says, can I see your hand? Because I wanted to read that version. Please look into your Bible, Proverbs 3.11. Because we project, some don't come to church with Bible, some don't read Bible, and it's wrong. If your translation says, uses the word eternity instead of the word, can I see your hand? I, I just wanted to, okay, thank you. Can you read what your translation says? He has made everything beautiful, made everything beautiful in, his time. in his time. Also, also he has put eternity in their hearts. Except, Ex no one can find out. Except no one can find out. Thank you. Beautiful. Now, this is under translation. He has made everything beautiful and appropriate. Appropriate in his time. There is time for everything. He has planted eternity. A sense of divine purpose. Oh, somebody say amen. amen. So, this is the first point in this second service to be established. And I said the first service, there is hardly anything. When I say things, I'm not talking about what clothes to buy. Nothing important. Nothing of value. Nothing like an assignment. There is nothing that God is going to do in your life that he has not put the script of it in your heart. Divine purpose. But the issue is, like I started last week, there is need for an interpreter. So when Samuel said to Saul, tomorrow I'm going to tell you the matters, what is in your heart. Saul was his father's probably last born. He was a very timid guy. But inside that guy, there was a conversation. Not in his mind, but in his heart that kingship is looking for you. And I end the first time by saying that, the problem with a lot of people, especially believers, you have never kept your mind quiet to know what is in your heart. There is a door between your mind and your heart. 
If your mind is not quiet, your mind is noisy, busy, distracted. I need to pay rent. When I wake up, I'm driving. This guy is driving nonsense. My cousin is calling me. I want to check Facebook. There is a mail. That's your mind. In fact, it is almost designed to stop you, especially in a city like Lagos, from paying attention to your heart. Is somebody with me? We started for service with Gideon. Outwardly, that's why a man is not measured by what you see outside. Somebody can have money and all of a sudden there is a deep conversation in his heart that his prosperity will not last. In five years, he will lose everything. Many of us have seen parents who own estates and have nothing by the time they are 70. It is not about what you see around the man physically. Part time, it is what is going on in his heart. Eternity is here. So somehow, Samuel did not just say to Saul, I'm going to tell you that God has said I should ordain you as king. He started by saying that, you know what? God has said I should ordain you as king, but God has also put it in your heart. You might have never told anybody about it. Now, the first mistake people make about this is that because of what I started with, and of course that's the first one, you have never kept your mind short to know your heart and then the second thing, we'll go back to the first one later, is the fact that people think that unless they see a vision, unless an angel appears, unless somebody comes to say that, you see, this is God's plan for you. Some of the redeems of their heart that are put there by God, they neglect it because they are looking for the spectacular. More than 60% of Christians on earth will never see a vision or an angel or anything. The Bible didn't tell you to look for any of those things. Some are waiting to take seriously what God has told them when an angel appears and he says, my son, or oh, my angel can call you son. Say, God's son, this is what God is saying. You will one day become governor. Some people, it happened like that. So in the Bible, we have people born by Samuel, prophetically. But there was no prophecy about the battle of Daniel. Yet Daniel was greater. So don't make the mistake. That is why at times I discourage certain testimonies. When somebody says that as I woke up, I saw an angel before me, those who have never seen angels before begin to think they are less spiritual. The word of God is the highest manifestation of God. And you already have it in your heart. If Jesus appears to me and he says, begin to pray for the dead and they will rise. Or one day I'm lying down on my bed and the Lord quickens in my heart that in my name they shall raise the dead. They will produce, in fact, the second one will produce more. Because only the word of God have eternal value. Visions don't have eternal value. Is somebody hearing me? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. And I also said, the end result. So in Daniel chapter 5, verse 10, where we read, and 11. Just look at this powerful scripture. Because this is why people need soothsayers. Those who are unbelievers. Astrologers. And some Christians are also looking for prophets around. It's because of this. See, because Daniel, go to verse 11 first. Verse 11. Verse 11. There is a man in your kingdom. In whom is the spirit of holy gods. In the days of thy father, light and understanding. Ah, I wish they can say this about every Christian in every office. This is the queen, a pagan queen, talking about Daniel. He said, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of God, was found in him. In whom the king, thy father, I say thy father made. Your father made the master of magicians, astrologers, and soothsayers. I am showing believers here and those who are watching me this morning, you also can be master of magicians. In other words, what people are looking for, soothsayers, crystal balls, you don't do crystal balls, you don't do any of those things, but the world dwells in you. Now, look at verse, verse 10. Verse, verse, sorry, verse 12. Next verse, verse 12. For as much as an excellent spirit, and you have it, God only goes, he says I do, of knowledge and understanding, now, this is why Daniel was way above soothsayer. This next thing, interpreting of dreams. Daniel was an interpreter. So one day the king calls magicians. And I've told you before, when it comes to things of real eternal value, 
your real assignment in life, coded there by God, the only pastor or prophet that can tell you is the one sent to you by God. The one you look for can never decode what is coded there by God. So, Nebuchadnezzar had magicians. He had astrologers. He had all these powerful people. But the day a divine purpose was communicated to his hearts, none of them could help him. The same thing happened to Pharaoh. If these guys were not good with magic, they wouldn't make them magicians to the king. Remember, when Moses dropped his rod, uh, Aaron dropped his rod, they dropped it and it turned to serpent. So there was a measure of supernatural power they possessed. But this matter of the arts came from Jehovah himself. It's coded. But where I'm going this morning is that God many times might not send somebody to come to your house and say, like Saul said, Samuel said to Saul, this is the matter of your hearts. What do we do? If God deems it fit to send somebody to you, he will. So that's why no matter how powerful the meeting is, like Iagan Conference, or anywhere you go to, no matter the, how enormous the anointing of the man of God is, he will likely not give prophecy to more than 3% of a congregation. It is true. This is why you must be trained to receive things yourself. People get ill during meetings, but those who come out to church and they cannot be up to one-tenth of the people at that meeting. There is a reason. God uses some as an example, but God wants the rest to turn to him. Because the one that lasts and the one that you can repeat every day is the one that you know personally. Can I hear a loud amen? Are we alive this morning? Praise the Lord. This is why this is very important. So what do I do? I have never seen a vision. Well, pastor, I've never seen a vision. Pastor, I've never seen a trance before. What do I do? You don't need them. But there is a secret. Ah. Oh. You should pay 10 billion for this message. <laughs> so I went to preach in one church. I told, I told the... When it, the workers or the leaders, leaders, we had leaders do for four hours. I went to preach in one church in the Kedja here. And I just shared a very fantastic church. When I finished preaching, as I was going, before I got to the junction, my phone just beeped and I checked the pastor had transferred one million. I said, Lord, am I supposed to be in HOD? <laughs> <laughs> I said, Are you sure this is not the church you are sending me to? I said, Because. I didn't even preach to the point of Sunday. I, the pastor is a very dear man of God, and the people are wonderful. Almost, I mean, they stood up doing a message. I'm preaching, and somebody just looking at me. <laughs> and the glory of Lord, he said, hey, he decided, yeah. <laughs> pick Josh, let me pick my, are you, are you with me? <laughs> glory to God. So if you don't respond very well, I'll package this message and take you to that church. <laughs> Maybe there will be dollars after preaching. <laughs> All of you after that, you'll be greeting me. Keep greeting. <laughs> when you hear that, you'll be located. <laughs> we, we make brand new the next pastor. So, it will bless you. <laughs> are you. Are you with me? <laughs> Glory to God. Now, if you are watching us, what I say about that church is true, but I'm just joking. And I know some people hate church and they start saying, hey, I'm not asking anybody for nothing. So, shut up your mouth and... <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, there are those who watch just to pick something that they can just. Are you with me? <laughs> if you are doing that, you are jobless. You don't you are listening to someone you don't like. You are the spirit of the Pharisees in you. They never love Jesus, but they always attending all his meetings. So look for what to say. Jesus wasn't attending their own meeting. It will be preached. It will say that. Say, so, so, by what authority? Why, why are you there? <laughs> Glory to God. Let's read this scripture. In the midst of Job's trial, you know, they said the oldest book in the Bible is the book of Job. Job predates Genesis according to Bible scholars. They just put it in somewhere before Sam in the Bible, but it's actually because Job existed long before Moses. Yes. 
Now, I want to read something. Job chapter 33. And let's start from verse 14. Now, pay attention. This is a very powerful scripture. And I'm going to go to two kings that dreamt. Just to tell you the principle behind this. When we say a dream, it does not have to be when you close your eyes. I want to bring everybody in service and those who are watching this morning very close to you beginning to decode what the Lord is saying to your hearts. Now look at this. God speaketh once, yet twice, yet man perceiveth it not. If your Bible is yours on the one, the first thing this thing tells you is that majority of God's communication, they look so simple that you can miss them. So God speaketh. This cannot be talking about vision. Because it, an angel cannot appear to you without you perceiving it. You will know. If Jesus appears to you and he says something to you, you will remember. That means that many of God's communication, they can be so light that you might not perceive. So Job said that it is true, whoever wrote this part of Job, that many don't perceive. He said, yet man perceiveth enough. But next verse. Now he said something quite profound there. Verse 15. In a dream, comma, in a vision of night, there are two different things. When a deep sleep falleth upon men, in the slumberings upon their bed. If your Bible is just underline that word bed. How many of you have noticed that Daniel said to the king, the word bed, Daniel used it almost six times in interpreting dreams. That means bed has something to do with it. Somebody, help me my tab. Let's read something. Are you ready? Praise the Lord. Thank you. Oh, Lord, help me to be fast. Are you following me this morning? Are you enjoying what I'm saying? Okay. I want to quickly check something. Now, look at this. Daniel 2.28. I'll just take two. Daniel 2.28, Daniel 4.5, and Daniel 4.10. Daniel 2.28. But there is a God in heaven that revealed secrets. Now he was standing before Nebuchadnezzar to interpret his dream. And make it known to the king what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are this. Why upon your bed? Daniel 4, 5. Now remember, this was first dream of Nicanazar. This chapter 4 is another dream that turned into an animal. The first one did not turn into an animal. I saw in a dream, now this is Nicanazar talking about the second vision. Uh, he said, I saw in a dream and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Thoughts upon my bed. He's talking about two things. You can't call dream thoughts. So there is an aspect, or at times, a few people might have a dream, literally. But the second aspect that people neglect are your thoughts upon your bed. Psalm 4, verse 4 will show you better. You can go on in Daniel and you see this. Okay, Daniel 4, Daniel 4, 10. Wait, Daniel 4, 10. Give me Daniel 4, 10. Those were the visions of my head in my bed. He said it again. Now, what happened to Pharaoh that he saw the next seven years? Pharaoh saw it, but he did not know the meaning of what he was saying. What he was saying. There are many people listening to me this morning. There are things that vi they visit you. Communications and thoughts of eternal value, divine purpose. They come, they go. Many times, you can't make a sense of them. Number two, you are even too busy to pay attention to them. You are like what Job said. God is speaking, yet man perceives it not. Then you come to the altar of your room. Then you pray and pray and pray. If there is a missing link in your prayer, what Jesus said, Jesus never told you to just pray. He used one word, watch and pray. Mm. If you pray and you don't watch, God will speak and man will not perceive it. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now look at Psalm 4, verse 4. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Ah, how powerful is your bed? No wonder the Bible said, let the high praise of God be in their mouth. He said, let, he started by saying that let them sing their loud upon their bed. There are some victories that are only won upon your bed. There is a time to stand on your feet and pray. But the Bible talks about upon your bed. Psalm 149. He said, let them sing their loud. The kind of praise that deals with forces of darkness harassing your life, it only happens upon your bed. What is bed? You see, there are communications in the Bible that also you have to decode. It does not mean water bed or foam. <laughs> Vital foam, <laughs> all those foam. <laughs> Otherwise, those who have water bed will dream more. <laughs> and when you want a very big dream, just increase the size of your bed. <laughs> if you are using this single one, <laughs> your vision will be single. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you want, or if your mattress is very flat, your vision will be flat. So, to have a very good vision, you will buy the one that is. <laughs> but that's not what the Bible is talking about. There is a principle behind it. What is the principle? What is said about what the king said shows him more. He said, Your thoughts or your bed and your dream. Your thoughts and your dream. Number one. Thing about bed is that it is privacy. It's a private place. You entertain guests in your city room. Only those who are extremely close to you. And many times when you are about to sleep, you withdraw from everybody. Now in that Psalm 4 verse 4, the Bible is not even talking. David wasn't talking about talking to God. He said, let your mind come with your heart. There is another type of prayer. It is called meditation that we do on our beds. The principle behind it is that there must be a moment in a day where you stay away from everybody, where you withdraw from everybody. It might not be physical withdrawal, say, because it might be an office where you can't really do that. You just shut the whole world down. Just you and yourself and you and God. So the day, one day, Pharaoh got to his room in the night. So as a king, you have squads, soldiers standing beside you, people bowing to you, entertainers. I, I wish I was a king in those days. Those people had absolute power. They used to enjoy life. People will bow, worship, do all sorts to you. We thank God for civilization. The king will see the most beautiful girl in town and say, put leg. You do that now. On our wives, we cut off your leg. Thank God for that. So, so, you know, so they had absolute power then. But you see, it got to a time. Pharaoh, thank you for entertaining. Thank you, thank you, all of you. So just would enter the room with him. So he withdrew and he was by himself. As he sat upon his bed, he saw the next seven years. The principle behind it is what I started with. There is a door between your mind and your heart. It is when you are on your bed, and I'm using this bed, the, the, the moment you are away from everybody and you sit down, some of the thoughts that are not connected to the busy schedule, activities of the day, projects to do, they begin to rise from your heart. And many of them are answers to the prayer that you are praying. Many of them are directions for, to you in life. Many of them are real reasons, explanations, interpretations of what is going on in your life. The reason why the marriage is the way it is. Now, this is outside all the people who have counseled you. Now, you are by yourself. So, bed is a time where you withdraw from everybody. The second thing about it is when you lie down your bed, you are motionless. Apart from turning, you don't come down and start walking around. That's why 
God, according to Job, waits for that time. That's not the only time God talks. If you are by the Spirit, He can communicate at any time. But some fundamental issues are decoded around that time. Oh, I cannot tell you inventions. If you will give yourself, that's what the Bible said, the book of law shall not depart, but thou shalt meditate. And Paul said, meditate on this thing. There is a time to get away from everybody and be still. You know what? I am communicating something spiritually, but I am also telling you, this can be done on a daily basis, physically, practically. Where there is a moment, interestingly, while growing up, reading from Glyn Bland, reading from John Maxwell, reading from the guy that wrote uh, Think and Grow Rich, because this, this one I just shared with you is not limited to Christians. Now, this is what New Age, they use a lot. It's just that they cut it away from God and everything, but sincerely, the Creator has made some things very powerful. That's why Sammy said, be still and know that I am God. Another, we can say it another way. Be still and know God's plan for your life. Ah, stillness is difficult for man. Many times, the only time you are quiet is as you're about to sleep. Your mind goes this way, money to pay, you're expecting this one, you're angry with this one, you are this one, this one, and the all of your time can be occupied. And that is what is happening to a lot of people. And whispers are coming from the realm of the spirit. In three years, we want you to move to Abuja. In three years, as you move, you are going to meet some people. The plan is that in the next eight years, you are the governor of your state. This thing is trying to come and trying to come and trying to come. But what is in your mind, on your mind? You are busy, anger with the boss in the office. As you get home, you are talking about what the boss did. He said this, I don't like the office. And then you are calling a friend. Sorry, do you not know the application? This is what your mind is busy on. Until you are still, your mind leads you. And your mind can't help you much. But there comes a time. You obey the bad principle. Finally, in the night, your mind has talked all day long and is quiet. Then from the eternal realm. The real communication comes. This is how people come out in the day and make a slight adjustment and their life goes ten times ahead. Both Christians and non-believers. Hallelujah. Because of Daniel's ability to interpret, he was called master of magicians. People seek for sorcery, occultism, all these things because they are looking for interpretations. People visit native doctors and when people get born again and they are Christian, they go from one man of God to another, they are looking for interpretation because they will not do what I've just told you now. Whereas even if you meet a genuine anointed prophet, there will still be aspects of a life that God, if God wants to send people to you, he sends them as you obey what I've just said now when you are not looking for any man. When Bishop Waloke met Governor Udogan and told that you'll be the governor of Delta State, Udogan was not looking for Bishop Waloke. He didn't know Bishop Waloke. They met in, on a neutral ground, a different state. They just happened to be in the same hotel. And Bishop Waloke was about to do prayer work. Udogan maybe went to jog and they crossed at the lobby. And Bishop Waloke passed him and said, come. I don't know, you don't know me, but this is what the Lord has said. This is not what you get going to look for somebody. When you practice it on your own, meditating in worship, quietness, when God sees that the need of your life is to send somebody, it will send it without you being the one. You cannot give God an advice. Yes. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. You know, when we got born again, they used to talk of quiet time. It's not only to pray. Learn to be quiet. Do you know you can sit, you can choose a day that you are not going out. You are in all day long. But it might just be that only the first two hours that you pray. The rest of the time, you are just quiet. This is why a phone has become your Lord. All this why that you can't do without your phone, how much help have you received from the phone? That even when you are in the church, you are tapping, pressing your phone. You are caught as a captive and you are going on. Every time, you can't do without your phone. When you forget your phone, it's like you have forgotten your life. 
A few times I've forgotten my phone in the office going home. So be it. Tomorrow I will pick it up and we start from there. Everything in the world is the world is designed to bombard us so much that we don't have time for this. People talk about miracles of old and ancient time. So this is why at times I just travel out of Lagos. I love when I sit at times facing an ocean and there's nobody there. Honestly speaking, you discover that truly God created, created nature. If all you do is to drive up and a generator, air, noise, and everything, and they, you don't know the kind of city we live in. So sometimes, if your phone is running, your TV is on. If your TV is not on, you are talking with a friend every now and then. And destiny is calling your name and you cannot hear. And you are living a life very far. God's plan is always higher than where you are. And it's calling. Our son, you are teaching in a school. Yes, we intended that we should start from there, but we have gone past that. We are planning that we should be a lecturer in Nava. These are the steps. Just go to so-so place. You are going to meet a friend and this one. But in that school, you are a warrior. Angry with teacher. Hey, this one, this one, this one. And as you are on your bed, even you are tossing to and fro because of anger. And the communication of heaven cannot come. So when God tells you not to be offended, when God says the sun should not go down with your anger, he knows what he's saying. These things don't affect God, they affect you. I. Do you realize that it used to be the cool of the day that God will come down to play with, to talk to Adam? There is, there is something that your quietness can spark between you and God. And then he allows your heart. He allows your heart. What I've shared with you today, practice. You can begin with just 10 minutes. Before I go to bed, you can begin and just say to yourself, before I go to bed, henceforth, I will switch up the light and sit on my bed for 10 minutes and just meditate over life. I have discovered that many of your mistakes will be corrected when you start doing this. All of a sudden, like light on your bed, you just say that, why am I operating this way? This is the way I should operate. You might not hear a voice, but this is heaven communicating with you. Somebody, one of the pastors that came during the Higher Life Conference, Higher Graham, when we're through, he was at the back there, and I was talking with Pastor Femi, and I just said, okay, you should meet and talk. And Pastor Femi just told him that, ah, now, he didn't come here to see Pastor Femi. Pastor Femi was not among the ministers that ministered. Pastor Femi just said, Pastor I would like to meet Apostle Femi, so I'm coming around. You saw him, so he came that day. That day. He is a prophet. Apostle was asking me that, that I heard, I, I heard the about this great prophet. I said, yes. His prophets are forensic. <laughs> I, hope, I mean, forensic kind of, uh, <laughs> at forensic level, I don't know the right word to use. So he was saying, so they just sat down in the lobby here, Apostle. Everybody wanted to talk with Apostle, but this guy just sat with Pastor Femi. And he said, excuse me, sir. There is like a light that goes here. The guy thought that he was going to have a stroke because a pastor started praying about it. Light will just pass through the body and go this way. Ah, he said, sir, it's not stroke. Oh. He said, it is the anointing. He said, you have prayed and you have asked. And he told him, next time you feel that vibration, this is what you should do. When you are not told what to do, it can live up to 70, the anointing, until finally it will lift and go to someone else. What about if Samuel was not told by Eli? This is another demonstration of it. God kept saying, Samuel, Samuel, but he never gave the message because there must be a code. So it was Eli that taught Samuel how to respond. That if you don't respond this way, it will be calling your name, but it will not tell you what it is. Why do I say a lot of people that destiny is calling your name, but they are not giving you the message? So Eli said that when next you hear the voice, say, speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. Then God came down and said, Samuel. Then God, Samuel said, speak, Lord. Then the angel said, they taught this boy.
names have been calling. Some of you listening to me here, some of you watching, names, your names have been called. But you are here to receive the information. Why are they calling you? Why are they calling you? Why are they calling you? I believe there are seated, seated before me today, this morning, are many interpreters who will lift this nation. In different areas. As you go to all the five, stars, five star hotels, ah, this is beautiful. But the communication of heaven is in seven years, you will have four of these hotels. Amen. This is what you do. Live where you are working. Go work here. These are inner road map that are inside. You tell your colleagues, you know, I want to stop working now because I'm going to so-so play. Uh, you do think you should go there. They, they cannot understand you. And I gave a warning for service. When God starts showing you this thing, don't expect others around you to understand what you are doing. They are not seeing what you are seeing. So they cannot understand. It is by this that if you have three friends who are male and you like them, they are very friendly and you are wondering which one to marry, this process I've taught you will separate the one that will beat you from the one that will help you. You will sit on your bed, you will just see it. You can't explain. But you tell others that it is this one. They're like, why? Ah, that, one, that one is nice. I say, I, I don't know how to explain, but I know in my heart this is the one that should be my husband. Now, I know somebody will watch and say, so the Holy Spirit tells us everything. Yes. And how many things has he told you? The Holy Spirit leads us, he tells us, as we train ourselves to hear our voice. But the question is, how does he speak? In many ways. This one I've described, they come more like inner, inward witness. It is the strongest way. Many people don't know that God's strongest way of leading is not by vision. It's the word of God and inward witness. There is a knowing you cannot explain. The Spirit just puts it there and holds it there. That this is the way. Let's stop here and take it from here next week. Shall we rise? I, I, I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Raise your hand and say it one more time. I love you. Let it come from your heart. time. Lift up your hands, everybody. Raise your two hands. Thank you. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. In this month of October, you will be led. You will receive revelation. Your heart will understand God's way of working in your life. God's plan for you. In Jesus' name. Is someone blessed this morning? Shout a loud amen. I, I wanted to say that because it occurred to me during the ministry, when I was ministering, I sense very deeply everybody send this message to at least 20 people between now and Friday. This will stop tears from many because as soon as they listen to it, some of them, they want that they sit down and open their heart to God on their bed. It will start telling them what has been waiting for seven years. It will start with all of you here. By the grace of God, there's none of you that will not receive something new as you start this. But obey an instruction. Spread this message. Spread this message. I told them for service. If you come here and you are not blessed, 
you don't really get touched by choir, you don't, you don't be what they are doing and everything. Be true to yourself. Then don't invite anybody to church. But if you come here, and whatsoever I share or they sing, if it blesses you, and you continue to be the only one coming, you don't share, you don't talk to anybody, you don't even share whatever we put on our Facebook, you don't participate in any other way than to attend. That is not good. That is not good. The Bible forbids self-centeredness. It made me to say that I don't say this every Sunday, but too many Christians, because God is not looking for babies, he's looking for soldiers. We come in as babies, but we come become soldiers. In other words, the whole earth is full of bad news. So you invited a palm sec for the conference. And she told me how she was blessed at the conference. Thank God for those who give us that opportunity. Many of us are too quiet Monday, Tuesday. And the reason is what I said before. You are too into what you want to do, what concerns you. And the devil keeps dangling. You are possibly, possibly, but you are not rich. Every time it's all about yourself, what you are looking for. Men and brethren, Mark 16, 11, go into all the world. It's a call to all of us. You might not be a bunker and evangelical type, but what are you doing about your community? What are you doing about colleagues at work? How can seven days pass? You have not shared anything spiritual with anybody. The whole seven days about yourself and yourself alone. Church, in October, HOD members, stop it. It's not good. It's not helping you. You are not working so much in the blessing as you should because you are focused too much on yourself. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You just appear, pick your Bible on Sunday and come to church. Whatsoever church is doing on social media, you are not part of it. Anything they are doing, you are not helping. No, no. That's not right. Please correct that from today. If a message blesses you, I'm not even saying it only about my message. If a message blesses you, send a message on friend. I'm sending something to you now. Plead with them. Please listen to a friend. It will bless you. And say, I will call you in two hours later after you have listened to that. Tell me your opinion about it. This guy they call Wole Arole, the comedian, he came here some months ago. And I, that was when I was sharing about garments. All, some of the top Yoruba, Nollywood actors, guys, if I mention all, some of the top, right during the service, he just started sending the link to all of them. And he showed me after service, came to the office. He said, wow, I've never heard anybody talk like this before. He said, I was so top, he said, he started sharing, and he started sharing, and he started sharing. I was like, wow, this guy is new. He's not even a major desire to come that day. And he was sharing and sharing. And he said, I want to do a program on TV and I want you to come and speak there. Let's stop do this thing. Among us, we have too many civilians who are not soldiers and who are not interested. We convert you today from being a civilian to being a soldier. It just means that you are on your feet. We are not saying go out Monday, Tuesday and be knocking every door. But what can you do where you are to just reach other people? You know, I can tell you, imagine, just imagine everybody. Imagine that as we are here, somehow by one technology, all Lagos people are not going anywhere today. As we are here, everybody in Lagos is watching what we are sharing. I bet you over 70% we say they are blessed by this message. But you see, but there are many, thank God for all churches here and there, but let's do our part and reach out to people. Did you get that? Grace is on you. In the name of Jesus. Hello, thank you for watching us. We don't want this to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know, um, after listening to God's word like this and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's an opportunity to come to him and it's a simple process because he has made all things available. I want to employ you now to give your heart to Christ and by saying these words, because giving your heart to Christ must be done consciously, he has paid the price. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you shed your blood for my justification. I accept your finished work right now, and I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. If you have said those words, you are actually born again, a new creation in Christ. Join us for more of this. God bless you.